Hello, everybody. Welcome to Women Lies Talk Show. Yes, friends, it's time for some coffee chat at womenlies.com. So we are celebrating women who dare to be different this month of International Women's Day. So today we are having somebody special from Singapore. And I am so eager to introduce her to you all. Kit Lim. Kit is currently the global head of culture, diversity, equity, and inclusion at a global maritime company. She is a strong believer of great employee experience, and it leads to great client experience. And that building a great place to work where employees thrive is key to unlocking human potential. She had previously spent more than 12 years in the legal industry focusing on international business development work and marketing communications. She also had prior stints in the IT, FB, and professional service sector. She is recognized as a think influencer by Tiger Hall, a social learning platform, and is also called also the co-chair of Prime Time Business and Professional Women's Association Mindfulness and Wellbeing Signature Interest Group. She also serves on the DNI committees of the British Chamber of Commerce, Singapore and Women's International Shipping and Trading Association, WISTA. Vista. Wow. Welcome, Kit, to Women Line Show. Hi, Charles. Thank you for having me here. First of all, let's celebrate women power and let's celebrate and cheers to womenhood and International Women's Day. This is such a special month across the globe and it's such a pleasure to have you and uh, such a multi-talented uh, person we are having today. And I'm so eager to learn from her, from her experiences. So my first question, Kit, can you tell us about your background and how you became an advocate for DEI and women's empowerment? Yeah, so how I, I, I would think that I am kind of like um, um, an accidental advocate in the sense that I didn't really start out thinking about doing this work that I'm doing right now. So um, I actually um, started my career more on the commercial side. So I was doing a lot of um, business development, client service and marketing communications that sort of were for the majority of my career. Mm -hmm. And so how I kind of got into the DNI space was, um, you know, as, as I alluded to earlier, was really accidental. So in one of my previous organizations, um, they were actually looking at setting up um, the DNI framework and, you know, some of the initiatives um, into, into Asia and into like Singapore specifically. And, and during that, I kind of like learned about that and I'm like, hey, you know what, I'm really interested in, in this work. Can I kind of be part of it? Can I be like, you know, the organizing committee and, and that sort of stuff. And I guess nobody kind of turns away the volunteer, right? And they're like, sure, you know, since we got people putting their hands up for that, why not? And that's how I kind of got involved. And the more I, I, I kind of got into this space, you know, the more I try to learn more about like everything in, in this sphere itself, I, I realized that there's more and more that I do not know. It's quite fascinating, and you're trying to figure out and trying to fill fill the gaps and trying to be educated in 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 this entire um, um you know space and also also learning from other individuals and hearing from their perspectives, right? And and so yeah, so and that kind of happened for for a couple of years, and I think. For me, I was also one of those individuals who probably like, you know, during COVID also trying to figure out like, what do I want to do with my career and, mm -hmm. and my life for the next like 20 and 30 years. And so I kind of have a reassessing of where I wanted to be. And I, I, I realized that this is actually a space I wanted to go into. And because it's really gels a lot with what I believe in, like how do we actually create a great client experience, right? And because I was in that space for so many years, it's really a lot about client service and how do we kind of bring value to the clients. But I feel like a lot of uh, how how we have to, how do we deliver those, those so-called, um, you know, uh, value add to clients. And I feel it's really a lot of how we can try to motivate employees to think creatively, to be more innovative, and to be more collaborative in delivering those experiences. And so I thought there was a lot of synergies in, in the way that I was looking at how framing this mm -hmm. and the work that I want to do. Mm -hmm. And obviously, you know, this, this work, um, diversity, equity, and inclusion is very meaningful work, and it creates a lot of positive impact, not just within the employees of the organization, but it's also like, you know, towards the communities that we serve in, and also like, you know, the entire supply chain, the entire ecosystem. So it's actually a lot more larger than that. And so, yeah, so that's how I kind of got, um, um, you know, involved in this. And, and I, I kind of look at this as being like one of the um, 
so-called my my purpose and where I want to be as well. And so when um, the the opportunity came up for me to kind of you know do this as a full time job, I just kind of took it up and never looked back. Wow. Oh. To me, it appears that it was your inner calling, which was calling you slowly, slowly. And then you realize, oh, this is my calling and I have to do this. And now you are there and doing amazing work. Fantastic share, kid. So how do you think uh, DEI, this diversity, equity and inclusive initiatives and women's empowerment efforts can benefit organizations and society as a whole? What's your thought process? Yeah, I think definitely. So, I mean, like, I I think there has been sufficient research out there to show why, you know, we should be embracing DEI. And I guess, especially for corporates, there's a lot of papers that's already been published by top leading consulting firms, like, you know, Boston Consulting Group, McKinsey, to kind of showcase why and, and having those statistics to back it up. So I think, you know, the why we should be embracing that is kind of like one of those um, awareness and education that people kind of already get it. But, you know, to your point, so what should organizations do, right, to kind of make more tangible differences? And I think it's really ultimately down to how we kind of frame this thing. And, and to me, the way that I like to see how, how DEI, how the narrative that we can take it from an internal from for corporates is how does this effectively help us to solve um, a, a business issue that we're looking at? And, and, and I think in a lot of conversations that we have, we are seeing, and especially more in terms of the gender equality and the gender equity friends, how do we promote more women? How do we hire more women? How do we try to make sure that, you know, in Definitely. the time, yeah, exactly, right? But I think fundamentally, and, and, and it's really like, what are we trying to solve out that? It's really kind of looking at how we can actually um, acknowledge that, you know, talent is, you know, talent competition is a real thing, right? And Thank so you. the way that we're looking from, from the DEI lenses is really looking at how we can actually expand the scope of the talent that we're looking at. And for instance, in the, in the maritime industry where I'm in right now, um, is traditionally a pretty much more male dominated industry. Thank you. And so, yeah, and, and so there's always this any debate about how we're going to get so more So sorry women. to interrupt, any percentage of women you want to highlight, which is there in this industry? Sorry, the any the maritime industry, any uh, number right. you want to give, how much percentage women will be there? Yeah, so I think it kind of depends because the maritime in industry is really quite, uh, quite big itself. And so um, depending on which part of the industry are in, like, for instance, where we are, we are more in the shipping part. So in shipping, you always think about like in terms of the seafarers, like people, women at sea, or like, you know, uh, women on shore. And so I think the statistics, right, is also greatly diverse as well. So if you're talking about yeah, just women yeah. at sea, right, you know, it's really, really very, um, it's a huge contrast in difference. So I think currently on the global level, the I think we are probably about two or three percent female seafarers. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But and and it so that's more, really a lot. More yeah, correct. Yeah. So but but and, and the question is like how do we try to um look at this from from a more holistic perspective right. because I think we're also quite aware that the nature of the work itself is different. It requires you to be at sea for a couple of months, you know, every time you're on the voyage. And then obviously there's also certain issues like, you know, um, harassment being real, being a real um, issue out there. And so it's, it's a very multifaceted issue where I don't think that's a one size fits all solution. And so I feel like, and, and not probably just um, be spoke to the, this industry, but for many other industries out there as well, I think, you know, we will see certain um, pain points where maybe I'm not the only one that's facing that issue. And maybe our competitors are also facing that because it's kind of one of those things that is uh, on the industry level, right? And, and so when it comes to that, it's really also, you know, conversations where I think it's really involving the entire ecosystem right. to see how we can actually try to work together and how we can collaborate and kind of address those um, issues and challenges that, you know, it's not unique to me, but like, you know, everyone else is also seeing. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I, I feel like, you know, in terms of, let's say, how women's empowerment has, has moved forward, definitely, I think um, we have progressed a lot over the years, but then again, there's so much more work mm -hmm. that has to be done. And, yeah. and it's really like how um, organizations can kind of play that role in corporate citizenship and also 
you know, like governments, what are some of those, like, you know, there might be legislations in place that might not be, but, you know, what is it that we could do? And also society as a whole, like mindsets, what sort of mindsets do we have towards women? Like, you know, do we expect them to give up their careers, to take care of babies at home? And I think this narrative has, has shifted quite um, over the years and, and people are much more aware, right? But definitely a lot more has to be done. Yeah. So well said. And I think it needs little speed now because so much awareness is there. Media is also talking a lot. It needs speed on the part of organizations that they really uh, work upon it and get it more effective. So uh, tell me in your experience, what are some effective strategies for promoting uh, DEI in any workplace? Some small tips. I think definitely, I, I would think that some of the strongest link and weakest link is really on the mid-level managerial level. Because I think sometimes, you know, we could have, um, you know, leadership team who are very supportive or who might not necessarily really be as um, advanced in the way of thinking how DEI should operate within their organization, right? But I think, right, the ones, right, if you look at, like, you know, how, 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 what DEI is about, it's like, you know, at the end of the day, what do we actually want to achieve out of that? It's really a sense of inclusion. It's really a sense of belonging. And so our sense of belonging, right, it's actually fundamentally uh, an equation of the people that we have around us. Mm -hmm. So it's actually not so much on the overall organization strategy, which is always there because that's the Northern Star and that's the guiding principle for the business, right? So, you know, that's likely not going to change in like maybe the next two or five years, unless there's a dramatic shift in the organization strategy, right? Then that's a different story. But, but it's really fundamentally a lot more in relation to like the people who have around us, like, you know, the our direct managers, what are the sort of support that they can provide us with, you know, what are the sort of, um, um, you know, accommodations, right, that they're willing to, to kind of like, you know, be uh, willing to explore for people who might have different needs or different requirements at different stages in our life. And so I feel like the middle managers, they are the group that we should be empowering to be able to create that sort of space and inclusive environment for mm -hmm. the employees. And, and so without that right you know you what we are hearing you know and from many different pockets and i myself personally also have been through that is this thing called the toxic culture where the bosses are not listening to you where they're pretty insistent on their ways of doing doing things where they're not really um you know empowering enough or they could be like simply micromanagers right mm -hmm. and and it was quite interesting and because i was listening to this story just the other day and someone was telling me that you know she has a manager and her manager is actually someone who's sitting on the c-suite level who's actually taking the attendance of every single employee that comes into the office right mm -hmm. i mean for for her particular team and because she's someone on the c-suite so a lot of people that are just taking attendance are also like you know the heads of department and it, it's it's kind of creating an environment where people like you know feel, feel a little bit stifled you know Thank but you. then again this sort of strategy i can't say whether it's right or it's wrong you know if she wants to do that we can't say it's wrong because yes, technically so in our employment contract it did stipulate the time right and if she wants to track it we can't say she can't do it Maybe. but the thing is like you know at the end of the day we, we also want to ask the question like what is the sort of message that we want to send by seeing um, especially certain managers I mean kind of like you know having this sort of behaviors is it a uh, is it like you know not trusting you you know or you know and and or is it like you know not kind of empowering people to to not be able to do the right thing because there might be a myriad of reasons why people might be late forward. It could be a train because or maybe they have to do a school run and, you know, it could be a lot of reasons or maybe they just stay up pretty late the night before because they had to do an overseas call. Yeah, and, and so, and so yeah, and, and so, you know, so, some of these behaviors can come across as pretty stifling to individuals. And so I guess it's like, you know, just kind of from this example, it's kind of getting people to think about like, how do we empower our things? Because I think at the end of the day, as I mentioned earlier, I think the great way to create like the best way to create a great client or customer experience is actually through like the great employee experience. How 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 do we motivate people? 
Because at the end of the day, I think what we want is to kind of get the best version out of each employee, each individual, right? So that when you're at the most, when you're the best version of yourself, when you're thriving, you're able to give your best work. Me too. Rather than feeling not trusted, not empowered, you know, really frustrated. Why is my boss doing this? You know, why am I being doubted so much? And, and that kind of creates also a very unhealthy cycle of self-doubt between um, you know, the, the manager and, and the employees. And, and I don't think we are getting the most out of the team. Mm. And, and that's also, you know, um, also having like implications in relation to team performance and also, you know, turnover and that sort of sustainability as well, right? In, in the sense of business sustainability and the continuity as well. So, so yeah, so I think there's a lot of very um, much like a lot of interlocking teams in between right. this that we could definitely explore oh i can connect so many dots because it's so true and as you mentioned i love that part that uh, yeah if the team is working together and everybody is thinking of how to give that atmosphere that opportunity so that everybody is performing their best i'm sure organizations will thrive in such a way and nobody can stop them and particularly women if they get that opportunity and organizations are taking care of that thing in their organization, things can be so helpful to women folk around. So get my last question, uh, some tips to women part. What do you want to say to them, how they can help themselves to be more inclusive or what's missing in them you have observed in your experience? I, I think it's, and, and also saying this from my personal experience as I try to reinvent myself and I, I've been kind of doing this, you know, transition myself over the years as well. Is I, I think self awareness helps a lot. Okay. Really understanding what is it that you want, what you are good at, what you're confident about. And I think, right, all these really comes with experience and comes with time as you gain uh, a better understanding. So I, I can be here, you know, speaking with you sounding really confident, but this is really kind of an equation of what I have accumulated over the years. And when I first started out in my career, I probably wasn't as confident as I am right now because I really don't know as much. I didn't know what I wanted. I didn't know what would be good for myself. I didn't know what I was really good at or what I was bad at. But I guess over the years, as you kind of gain experience, as you kind of widen your network, you kind of have a try at different things. You kind of have a better understanding of like who you are as an individual or you know your, your values your purpose like you know what you're good at what you want to be seen as and even like things like your personal branding right and and i feel like all these kind of stem from a level of self-awareness and that self-awareness also comes ties in very tightly and closely with self-worth because in, in, in so many instances, we do hear about women having self-doubt and things like in imposter syndrome and, and this sort of things are really not, not sure whether I can do it. But I think, right, if we do have that level of awareness of who we are and, and it kind of helps us with our self-worth, it will be so much more um, helpful where we are kind of managing those doubts that we have along the way and we try to take a more objective approach in 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 kind of like making sense of the entire situation and where we are and and so i, I think you know that's really my key message right, for for women out there and and i think it's okay for us to not know about like you know who we stand for and all that because i think this is a journey right and mm -hmm. it is really like kind of ever searching and 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 for a lot of of really wonderful women out there whom I know who are constantly reinventing themselves. They are also kind of, they are also sharing with me that, you know, at every part of the journey, they're finding so much more about themselves that they previously didn't know. And, and it's been such a, an amazing journey for, the, for themselves as well. And so I think for us, it's really thinking about like, you know, what, what's, you know, sort of journey that we kind of foresee. And, and also sometimes, right, also being open to exploring um, new ideas and new perspective because the thing is you never know what's going to take you and, and I think that's really like the the really enjoyable thing about life itself right it's like you, you never know I mean I never knew that I would end up where I am Sorry. when I started out in my career I mean I didn't even know like a role in D I existed <laughs> and, and a couple of the previous roles that I've been as well I'm like wow like yeah so beautiful share kid the powerful word is re keep reinventing friends. So that's a wonderful message we have from Kit. And 
have clarity about yourself. Know what you are and where you want to go because that will only help you to grow the success ladder and achieve your dreams in life. Thank you so much, Kit, for your time. It was such a wonderful session with you. And thanks for sharing your knowledge. I wish you all the best for your journey. And let's do once more cheers to women power across the globe. And yes, thank you so much. Take care. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you, everyone.